Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm gonna show you a free and easy way to blacklist or block words from your Elementor contact forms. I made this video right here last year on how to install Google Recapture on your Elementor contact forms. I'm gonna leave a link to the description below. There's a card up here as well. You can click that if you wanna see that video. Now, Google Recapture can work great against bots and really bad scripts, but once in a while, you still might get some of these spammers who are manually hitting your contact forms. One great example is this spammer right here who's been hitting our contact forms for years. This spammer likes to manually hit people's contact forms and then tries to sell you his services on selling spam. I've tried several times to report this spammer to the hosting company and his email provider, but of course, these companies do nothing about blocking the spammer. So here's a screenshot of what this spammer likes to send to people's contact forms. What he does is he normally likes to have different emails. So he has info at yournewsecretweapon.com. He does help at, you know, whatever. He probably has a million different uh, emails. So what I wanted to do is figure out if I can find a way to block this whole domain. And with this plugin that I'm going to be talking about in this tutorial, you can do that. And then you can also target certain keywords within the message itself. So he likes to always promote his website within the contact form. So if he has those keywords uh, in the contact form, we can go ahead and use this plugin and automatically block him from sending the contact form. So after doing some research and instead of manually creating some sort of function, somebody already created a really good plugin that will do this work for you automatically. So you can head over to uh, this plugin right here. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below to download it as well. But all you really need to do is just install this. And this is automatically going to give you the options to, you can see right here, blacklist words for Elementor and contact form seven forms. So if you're using either one of those, this plugin is going to work really good for you. Once you have the plugin installed, you're going to see a new tab over here called anti-spam. And what this plugin is going to do is give you the option to put in your blocked words, emails, anything along those lines, just in this one page settings and then it's gonna go across all of your contact forms with Elementor or Contact Form 7. And then once we start doing some testing, you're gonna see that underneath the log, you can go ahead and see what uh, forms were blocked and why they were blocked. So let's just quickly go through these settings and show you what I was able to do. So if you remember from before, this is what the email looked like where the spammer likes to put in his um, URL within the text area right here and as an email field. So what I wanted to do is anytime that this uh, spammer would put in his website name, so you're going to want to go ahead and do the different variations. So you can do like HTTPS, www, whatever you see as a regular occurrence on a spammer, just go ahead. You can enter that into your text fields right here. And then we have a text area field. So you might as well just put it in both of those. So if you aren't familiar with what the difference between a text field and text area field is, um, it's as simple as any time that you have this right here is a regular text field. So if it's just one line, but then if you have an area where people can type in a message, which is the main part of the contact form. So you can see right here, I have like describe your project. That's considered a text area. So anywhere that there's multiple lines, that's considered text area. So what I wanted to do, like I said, just go ahead, enter in his URL here because he likes to spam his URL and then an email field. So of course, anywhere that you have an email field itself, you can manually enter in the different uh, emails that the spammer has been using. So in this case, he was using info at and then help at. Now, if you look down here, this really complicated gibberish, you can also use what they call uh, regex or regular expression. You can go ahead and add in a string of code that will automatically block the whole URL. So first, let's do some testing. Let's make sure that this is working correctly. So if you want, you can go ahead and just go to a contact form. Let's just do test. So let's say the spammer is going to use that email address. And let's just say test. Usually, it would go through and spam me. But now you can see right here with this plugin, this looks like spam try to rephrase or contact us in an alternative way. So that's the default message if something gets triggered. So if, in this case, of course, we used help at and his spam uh, URL. Now, if you want to go ahead and change what that um, error message says or the validation message, you can change that right here. But by default, I kind of like the way that sounds. So you can just keep that. If not, you can change it. 
Now, if you head over into the spam log, you can see that that's been registered as spam. So anytime that somebody does that, it's gonna automatically trigger um, that spam log. So let's just try another one. If you do info at, it's gonna block that as well. And if I refresh this page, there's gonna be two now. So it tells you right here that the email is what triggered that um, log. So if I go in here and just type in random characters like that, it's gonna go through because I only triggered info and help at. So now you can see that this is gonna go through to my regular contact. So now I'm gonna show you how to use a regex format where you can just target a whole domain. So anybody that tries to use an email at that domain is automatically gonna get flagged. So you could just paste this in right here. I'll leave this in the description below because it's a little uh, long and complicated to type in. But basically, it's kind of like a wild card where you wild card plus your new secret weapon.com, the spammer's address, that is what's gonna be triggered. Anything that's at that spammer.com, it's gonna automatically get triggered. So let's go ahead, save that, and let's do some testing to make sure everything's working. You just need to go ahead, hit save after you do that. Let's hit refresh here. So let's just type in test here, and let's do gibberish at your new secret weapon.com. And do not go to that website. This guy is a huge spammer. You can see online, there's a lot of people complaining about this guy, but this is just a good test. Okay, so now we can see that that gibberish or anything at that domain got picked up by the plugin. So let's go ahead, let's just type in another random one right here. And yeah, you can see it's working exactly the way that you want. And like I said, you can go into the spam log and now you're gonna see the email's been triggered four times so far. So let's go ahead and let's see if we can make sure that if we put in his domain here, let's do a regular just test at test.com. Let's see if that text field gets picked up. Yep, you can see right there that worked good. So now we can just do test and let's see if he added his domain into the field down here that this is gonna get picked up as well, yeah. And as you can see, there's a lot of other options too. So if you wanna limit the amount of characters for that uh, text field, you can do that right here. So if you don't wanna have it go over, let's say 30, you can just put that in and anything over 30 will just get blocked automatically. Same thing here, if you want your text area, you can just make a limit here. So they give you a lot of different options down here for languages as well. So if you wanna only require certain languages or forbidden languages, you could put that in right here. They give you some options for phone numbers. If you know the IPs, you could just go ahead and block that. You can do that there. And then you could do allow or block countries. So if you know that you never want to get uh, contact forms from one of these countries, you could just do that right here. So any changes you make here, you just want to go ahead, hit save, and then it's automatically going to update. What, what I like about this plugin, you don't have to do anything else. You just configure it at that one page. You don't have to go to each form. So if you have 10 different forms on your website, all using, let's say, Elementor, it's going to automatically pick up across all the different forms. And that's it for this video. Like I said, I'll leave a link to this plugin in the description below. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new Elementor tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.